Now today, friends, we begin in the 12th chapter. And I'd like, as usual, to tie it back in to the last study that we had. You'll recall that we said that when the law, the book of the law, was found in the temple and it was read to the people that it had such a profound effect on this man, Josiah, he called the people in and had them make a covenant that they would keep that law. And that law, by the way, is found beginning in the 21st chapter of Exodus and the 22nd and the 23rd chapter, and actually all the way through to the giving of the instructions for building the tabernacle in chapter 25. And what we have here is a man's relationship to his neighbor, his relationship to the person of others and also the property of others, and how he should conduct himself as God's man. And they took an oath that they would keep it. But the thing that happened was that this revival was largely a surface revival, but it's no question but what the words of Jeremiah had its effect. And there were many that had in genuine sincerity turned to the Lord. And we again would lift out verse 6 of chapter 11. Then the Lord said unto me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant and do them. Now, what happened was the people promised, of course, that they would do this. But the fact of the matter is that it wasn't long that deterioration set in after the revival why things began to wear off, that is, the spiritual, and the people began to return to their old ways. And even Josiah made a very grave blunder. He went out against the king of Egypt, the pharaoh, Necho, and they fought at Megiddo. And at the battle of Megiddo, why, Josiah was fatally wounded, and he died And Jeremiah, we're told, mourned at this. Over in 2 Chronicles, the 35th chapter, at verse 25, I read just this. And Jeremiah lamented for Josiah. This man, Jeremiah and Josiah, obviously both young men. And this man, Josiah, died as a young man. Jeremiah wept bitterly because he knew what was going to happen, that the people would not only return back to idolatry, but they would sink farther down in immorality, which, of course, they did. And he gives them a message that, of course, they didn't want to hear. But now, we saw last time here in the last part of chapter 11, he had to leave his hometown of Anathoth. Josiah would have protected him had he been alive. But now Josiah's gone. And what has happened, Jehoahaz comes to the throne. He actually was an uncle. His mother's name was Hamutal. And he only reigned for three months. But that period, he's given over to total iniquity and evil doing. And then after him, why, Jehoiakim, and Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, was made king of Judah by Pharaoh Necho, the king of Egypt. And in return for this appointment, Jehoiakim, he taxed the land and he paid tribute to Egypt. And it wouldn't be long until Nebuchadnezzar would defeat the Egyptian king and Jehoiakim then became the vassal of Babylon for three years after which he rebelled against the king, and that was against the warning of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah also warned against an alliance with Egypt as a false confidence. And the very sad thing was that Jehoiakim would, of course, pay no attention to him, and he became even more corrupt than any before him, so that We're entering now into a very evil period in the life of the nation, and the only light now left is this man, Jeremiah. 
and added to that after Jeremiah was forced to leave his hometown and this young king Josiah is slain and these evil men come to the throne and conditions get worse. He has what I believe every honest Christian has doubts come into his mind and in his heart. There'll be those dark thoughts that are going to come to you and you're going to wonder about why God permits certain things. I have a notion that every preacher who stood for the things of God wonders at time why God does not move. There are those moments of doubt. And every pastor, he looks around and sees how his people are suffering. And it's his best people. It's the more spiritual folk. They seem to be having more trouble. I was riding with a lawyer and his wife up in Oakland, California the other day. And she brought out that. And she, by the way, has a radio program for children that goes out over this country today. And she raised the question. She says, it just seems in our church that it's the godly people that are having the trouble today. Why does God permit that? That's a question that comes to every one of God's children, I think. David, you remember, raised that question. He saw the wicked spreading themselves like a green 